What's up, what's up everybody? It's Hall of Heroes time again, and it's choose your own adventure Hall of Heroes. So today we're gonna go over the five different choices for Hall of Heroes. I kind of basically already did this in the other video, but people still keep asking me and asking me and asking me and asking me, and I'm like, w I talked about it in the other video, but okay, I'll do another video about it specifically. So anyway, uh, but we're also, it's not just that, we're also going to, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do a different Hall of Heroes, uh, show you guys the monsters that are on each of the different Hall of Heroes on each one of my different accounts. So you guys can see like what you're in for if you choose a specific one. If you're like, oh, I don't have the monsters to even be able to beat, uh, be 10 of that or even be 5 of that or some, something like that. Uh, so we're going to see all the different ones and I'm going to explain to you why I'm choosing every single one on the different accounts that I have. So basically to give you like the, the rundown, I feel like... For the light and darks, you're not going to get those options again, right? So you might, like, if you already have the light and darks, then I would say probably go for Olivia, right? Olivia is my favorite uh, as far as utilization. The light darks, they're rare. You don't know if they're going to get buffed. You don't know if they're going to get, uh, well, they're not going to get nerfed. But you don't know if they're going to get buffed in the future. The light, uh, Death Knight already got buffed a little bit. I think the uh, Talasha might have got buffed too, the dark uh, Undyne. Uh, a while ago, a while ago, um, not any time recently, but you don't know, and it's nice to be able to have, like, all the options just in case, like, you never get another opportunity to get it again, so that's why, like, the light and darks are kind of nice to maybe consider going for, uh, but as far as utilization in actual gameplay, Olivia should give people, I mean, Olivia's great in high-level RTA, in any level RTA, she's great with different, uh, defense-based, uh, damage dealers, She's great for Guild War offense as well, so I feel like Olivia, you can, if you invest in Olivia and you give Olivia good runes, you can use her in multiple different places. Even, even early game players can use Olivia in, for example, Giants B10. Olivia can be a great unit in Giants B10. So, I don't feel like Olivia's ever really a bad choice. Uh, the Water Lich has been getting pretty hyped. People can, uh, you can use him in R5, you can use him in, uh, different, uh, Rift Beasts as well. Some of the Rift Beasts would be nice to use the Water Lich. I use him in R5. I might show you guys, include a clip or something like that. I use him uh, on my Europe server, I use him in R5. I was using him in Necropolis at first, but now after the buff, I'm using him in R5. The Fire Assassin is really, she shines mostly in the Wind Rift Beast. Uh, but there's other things that you can use instead. She's not necessary in the Wind Rift Beast. It would be, you'd be better off uh, using a Shiwa. I would recommend over the Fire Assassin. But I'm just saying she's, she's an option. But I don't feel like she's useful enough in enough places that you really, like, go for her. Uh, unless you want to sculpt the other assassins. Same thing with the, I mean, the, the Lich, the, the same thing. He's been seeing a little bit of him in RTA, but I don't know if it's just a fad or not. Um, I feel like Olivia is the, out of the normal elements, Olivia is the one to go for. And then the lighter dark one, like, whichever one strikes your fancy. Uh, but I did see one of my guildmates has some good, um, has had a good defense, uh, siege defense, with the light Death Knight, actually. So, uh, anyway, we'll go over and we'll look at all that stuff. First off, I want to take a look at this, uh, since we're on the global, uh, server account. Uh, I want to take a look at this. This is my guildmate, Huishi. He was a guildmate in the, the other guild, too. And he's also a guildmate in, uh, this guild as well now. And he has used the Light Lich since, like, the first Hall of Heroes, like, years ago. The first Hall of Heroes that he was in. And he really likes him. He feels that the Light Lich is underrated. And, I mean, 11 wins, 1 loss. It's not, like, the top 10 guilds. But, uh, but it is also Orion Garrow is very strong already, so it's not like he's just a Light Lich and two random other things. Um, but let's explain what the team does. It's, uh, but I mean, like, it's got a good win rate, right? Uh, so let's explain what the team does. Orion goes in, he strips, he defense breaks, you know the drill. Uh, Garrow comes in, he starts to do damage to something, and then the Conrad will finish whatever it is off, right? And a lot of people underestimate the Conrad. They're like, oh, what does he even do? It looks like a dumb defense because who even builds the Light, the light Death Knight? Uh, but it'll do big damage, and he will revive potentially something. Nothing's going to need to be revived if it has the first turn, so it's going to put a big shield on, uh, on all your team. So there is that element of sustain, and also if something dies, the Conrad can revive them as well. So, and also he's a light unit, right? So he's got the speed lead, and he's also a light unit, so no matter what Garrow hits, or Orion defense breaks, or whatever, um, it's going, he's not going to play favorites. He's not going to be like, oh, well, I'm a wind unit, so I'm going to hit a water unit, even if Garrow starts doing damage to something else. 
He's like, I'm element neutral, I'm just going to hit whatever. So I just thought I wanted to show you guys this defense because he's used this for a long time. Uh, this and then other combinations. I think other different combinations, not just a, a Ryan Garrow. But he's used things like this for years. And he always says, like, people underestimate the, uh, the Conrad, so... So like I said, we are on the main, so I'm gonna go for actually Lexi, uh, of all things, on my main. So let's take a look at what's in the, uh, hey, that's the team that I was using for the last haul here, apparently. Uh, let's take a look at why am I choosing Lexi. I am mostly choosing Lexi because I don't, well, she'd be better on, like, a lot of fight runes, right? Rage fight or triple fight. Uh, but I don't have skill ups on the Lexi, and I think I possibly don't have skill ups on... I think I don't have skills on the wind one either. Let me see if I can find. Yeah, wind one's not maxed either, and I would like to max those. So let's see what uh, let's see what we even have here. I don't like you don't need to use this team necessarily. Um, this is just like a, okay. So we have speed based DPS. Let's just go through it. Um, Crazy Velg speed based DPS, and then the two. Water Assassins are going to do uh, damage based on attack speed and attack power. So it's like double buffs on them. Uh, these girls, there's attack power buffs. And then uh, uh, they, it doesn't seem too crazy. I mean, you could just CC and it's kind of an easier haul here. This one has got the Veligel, so you can't really CC too much, right? So not really too much of a thing until uh, until Veligel. But... I mean, at the, at the higher stages, that's going to start hitting hard. This one could be annoying, depending on the resists on this, um, on this, uh, Light Anubis. One of the best Light Dark Nat 5s in the game. This part could be annoying. So I think that might, uh, get some people. This part, with the betas, could also be annoying. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the immunity parts, or the, the cleanse parts, can potentially get people and can cause people to get stuck. Okay, so I mean, for the most part, the two, the Anubis and the Beta, I think might get some people in the higher stages, but for the most part, the other stages seem to be, I mean, you can just CC them and easy. So this is where I use Lexi uh, on my main. She is there because she basically, um, this passive, it's already, the, the boss already does like a similar passive and they can't stack on top of each other, which is nice. So she basically acts as a, Kind of like a Darian-ish, because uh, she, uh, she's she got a damage mitigation passive. And she also has a defense break first skill, and a brand on the second skill. Well, you wouldn't think she has a defense break on the first skill, right? Because <laughs> where's the defense break? Uh, but she's got two things that multiply the damage, and then also that silence. The silence doesn't do anything, but things like the fire homunculus and things like the brandia do damage based on the amount of debuffs uh, on the enemy unit. So it will increase the amount of damage, even if the silence itself doesn't really do anything. But this is how I have her. And again, like, Rage or Fatal or, um, Fight. Rage Fight, Fatal Fight, uh, Rage Blade, Fatal Blade, Attack or Damage Attack. Generally the, uh, the rune builds for this one. Now we are on the Europe server. On the Europe server, I'm gonna pick Talasha. Why am I gonna pick Talasha on the Europe server? Mostly because I wanna skill up her sister, Ikasha. They have some weird names, I'm realizing this now. So I've been wanting to skill her for a while. Uh, I built her a long time ago, and I was like, man, I have her on my main as well. But uh, I built her on uh, a while ago. I think aside from the some of the base, the base HP could be better, the base B could be better. But I think she's a, not as bad of a unit. People don't realize that she's actually pretty decent. Cooldown. This is a full strip if the target lands as a critical hit, unless they changed it. Uh, but it says removes a beneficial effect. But you, at least it used to do uh, be a full strip. And then we've got the invincibility, which is kind of nice. Um, not super amazing, ridiculous, but this uh, strip and then this uh, cooldown is pretty nice. Um, it's kind of like a budget Okinos, but she has two different skills. But she strips a lot. Like, she strips for a skill. Uh, so anyway, uh, I think she's got some potential. I think she's underrated unit. Let's take a look at Talasha, though. Let's take a look at, like, where exactly she's... Um... So Talasha... Just to, just to use her sister, right? Uh, so Talasha's got this glancing hit, which is... Glancing hit. She's got this AoE attack gauge decrease, which also heals the ally with the lowest HP, which is not bad. Attack gauge decrease is really nice in dungeons. It's really nice in TOA. It's really nice in Hall of Heroes. And then we have this dark return. Uh, revive an ally with little HP and grants turn instantly. This is potentially a combo. This is potentially a combo mechanic against, like, cleave teams. Uh, against like things where like they're trying to 
take first turn and snipe something immediately, Talasha can be a nice mechanic to uh, to come back from that and ca and ca uh, combo with either Ramagas or Trevor or uh, Dark. Fwa used to use this with the Dark um, Dark Elemental. So little HP grants a turn instantly. So like let's say if you use this with Ramagas, if you use this um, with Ramagas and you're fighting a siege team uh, and they kill the Ramagas instantly, uh, like one two nuke combo. You can bring the Ramagas back. Little HP grants turn instantly to Ramagas, and then he can just use his clean shot. Same thing with Trevor, can use his uh, his nuke revives with little HP, which means he's fully, fully supercharged, right? Uh, then what else do we have? Fwa, Fwa Fwa was using him with uh, Camulis, uh, which Camulis uh, reflects 30% of the incoming damage for three turns, keeps your HP from falling under one. So he was using, he was bringing back the Camulis, like, like not even six star game, it was like three star, four star, something like that. Uh, he was using a nice combo, and then like everything else is like the enemy team kept hitting Camulis because he's got low HP, so they keep targeting, targeting, targeting. But he's got he's got the endure, he's not gonna die, and he just reflects damage. So they're just doing all this massive damage, reflecting it back on themselves, and then killing themselves basically in the process. So it's a really gimmick niche Guild War team. I don't know if it's got a crazy high win rate. You can win with it. But uh, it's it's kind of an interesting kind of combo if you guys like to play around with fun things like that. If you feel like you're getting outsped all the time, don't a lot of us feel like that, right? Not everyone has a billion sets of uh, 300 speed runes. But anyway, that could be a nice uh, combo with that. So let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at that. Let's use uh, yes. I was going to I built the wind one as well. So this is the I guess this is whatever team I was using the last time with this. Let's see what kind of. Uh, kind of enemies we have here. So this one could be actually kind of uh, kind of tricky on the later stages because they have immunity. A lot of, like again, a lot of things with uh, immunity um, and cleanse. That team I don't feel like is going to be, although that can't be, the water lich can't be, uh, can't be cleansed. Some of these might be tricky because like these guys can't die. So eventually they'll get it. So I don't think this is going to be... I think the the Velagel uh, mid-stage was going to be trickier than this one. But the first two stages on this I feel are trickier than the uh, the first two, two stages on the, the last one we saw. Uh, what do we have here? This this is not the tricky part. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking now. I'm talking about like in the later stages what's going to be challenging, what's going to be difficult. This I feel like is not going to be... It's mostly the immunity stuff that goes crazy. Or like the things that's like... The, the immunity cleanse that eventually gets you. So I feel like since some of these undines have uh, have some immunity, and those water liches, man, the water liches can't be CC'd. So you have to use on those water liches, right? because I mean, I'm good, sure we're gonna see the water liches uh, in the Hall of Heroes in the next one as well. That you're gonna wanna use a lot of attack gauge reduction. Not just, just stuns, but a lot of attack gauge reduction. Okay, so now we're on my Asia server account. On this one, I'm gonna go for Olivia. Olivia is a great combo with, uh, let me show you guys one of the best Guild War combos. Not against this team. Uh, <laughs> didn't say we didn't have already good units on this account. But uh, also, my uh, this girl, my Lisa, is not fully skilled up on this server either, so I would like to give some skill ups to that. But let's say, let's say this was Olivia. Let's say she was Olivia, and then Rakuni, and then a Bulldozer. Where's Bulldozer? He's somewhere. I have a Bulldozer on here, I promise. Uh, so this is... I swear I have a Bulldozer. I just saw him. You guys see. You guys know that there's a Bulldozer somewhere. Oh, oh it's right there. It's literally right there. But Olivia has a defense-based uh, leader skill, so... It's one of the best, uh... The, currently the, one of the best, uh, Guild War teams. Uh, Guild Siege teams. So I'm, I would like to have Olivia here. And I would also like to finish skilling up the Lisa for uh, raids as well. So let's take a look at, uh, cause she's got such crazy like, okay, let's take a look at Olivia though. Let's take a look at Olivia. She is, has one of a really, really, really good skill too for cycling turns. Cycling turns is important. Where is Olivia? I'm gonna find this Olivia. Uh, two turns, briefing. Removes all harmful effects on the ally, fills up the ally's attack bar. This is not even just good for removing harmful effects. This is good for making sure if you have one unit that's really OP, has a really, really good third skill, you can continue to use briefing 
violent proc, use, uh, get another turn, etc, etc. Keep using briefing on another unit uh, to continue to give them extra turns to give them more access to their third skill. That's uh, very important. Also, the lockdown increases defense by three for three turns is pretty... I mean, this is a consistent, like, all the time defense buff. So if the enemy doesn't have, like, ignore defense or something like that. Plus we have the leader skill, which is a great combo with Bulldozer. I know he has a leader skill already. Uh, defense, Guild War leader skill, which is it was a great uh, patch for him to uh, to get that. But, um, but yeah, I know he already got that. But this is just, uh, she's, this one's better. And of course, we... Twins! So let's see what's, uh, let's see what's in here. Potentially annoying if they get turns. You can just CC that, but potentially annoying if they get turns. This, you might, this might be really annoying if you can't CC these, uh, if these, uh, Lisas stop you from CCing them. Cleanse, man. The cleanse and then all the turns. All the turns. Those, uh, the, cause the succubus is well, um, this one could be annoying. You just want to attack gauge reduce this, for the most part. A lot of this you can just uh, attack gauge reduce though, because if you don't attack gauge reduce all these kamoons, I know people are just gonna twins these anyway. But uh, if you don't attack gauge those kamoons, then uh, then what's the kamoon gonna do? Then they're just gonna keep shield, 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 shield. And it's gonna take you forever to do that. Uh, for these girls, the light it's not even that. You just CC that. These ones should be should be fairly easy. Um, you just CC, you just use a bunch of dots, and it should be fine. But that, that, um, the Lisas and the, the Water Succubus, I could see that being, like, a pain if you, if you miss the CCs on the Lisas, and she's just like, EVERYONE'S AWAKE NOW! You don't get any freezes, you don't get any stuns, everyone's awake now, and they just put the, 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 cause the Water Succubus will sleep on the first turn, and also increase her attack age, so then she'll get closer to getting another turn, uh, she might possibly even get another turn after that with that combo. It's pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. This one shouldn't be... I mean, you can just CC this, really. As long as you can CC the things, they shouldn't be that that challenging. So, I'm mostly looking for the things that, like, strip. Or, like, crazy shenanigans you possibly were not expecting. Not, not strip, cleanse. Cleanse immunity, things like that. That stop you from uh, being able to like CC, do dots, CC, do bombs, CC, do defense break, attack, age reduction, whatever. So, um, yeah, there's the uh, there's the Olivia one, which most people are going to use that one, right? So let's take a look at uh, an example of the Olivia team. This is not like super high level gameplay or whatever, but I'm just showing you. Like, I want to show whatever I have available. Um, I want to show uh, what we can do, right? So you've got this. And then we've got this, and we've got, we could do one of these, and then we just do uh, one of these. And then they're going to do a bunch of uh, damage to us. But we have defense lead, and we have, uh, can we glancing? No, no glancing. I don't want to potentially revenge, right? Oh, never <laughs> mind. Okay, so we can briefing, though. Uh, we can just keep filling up his attack age and give him uh, access to his third skill more often. Filling up his attack age again. Um, actually, I should have, uh, skill 2. I'm just showing you a sample. Not high, super crazy, uh... Don't! <laughs> and she gets stunned. There we go. Uh, but look, he's already got access to his third skill again. Because we did that little bit of extra attack H, uh, increase. So. So that would be uh, just a sample. How many times am I gonna say sample? It's just an example. It's like, or it could just Lucian things. Or whatever, you just, you just do Lucian things. There you go. So here's a great example of why Olivia is one of the best picks for this Hall of Heroes. Is because she, in herself, is such a great uh, support unit for defense-based damage dealers. Whether it's uh, Veljul's defense-based damage dealer, um, uh, Copper's defense-based damage dealer. So they got two supports. Basically, the, the team that they were using, the team comp they are using, is two supports and three defense-based DPS. Although, Veljul is a defense-based DPS that's also a support, though. So, kind of a, Veljul kind of a mixture. Come to us, give me Veljul! Give me Veljul, right? He did a uh, decent amount of damage to uh, Okinos there. So you've got, he's, they're CC'd, but uh, they're gonna be able to take so much damage. So, instantly took out the, um took out the fire druid because that's the one that defense breaks and everything um 
So it's just a matter of time. Nothing on that team is doing any damage. And then Olivia can cycle very well on her second skill. So she can keep uh, helping someone activate. Like if, if they want to um, have the, for example, I mean, Rakuni can also help people cycle and activate too. Don't get me wrong. Rakuni's also, he just doesn't have a defense buff. You know what I mean? So both of them are, are nice, uh, nice units to continue to give someone extra turns. Oh, Okeanos. So, briefing onto herself, lockdown, defense buff on everyone, additional turn, briefing onto Copper, okay, and Veljul gets the... So, but this is, this is someone that's been using, um, in G3, using Olivia all the time, and a lot of times they use, um, in addition to the units here, their core team is, like, Bulldozer, uh, Copper, Olivia, and uh, Immesity. They also use as flex units. Sometimes I see them using Chow. Sometimes I see them using, um, of course, Veladol, uh works well on the team. Uh, Amelia works well because she's got the immunity plus a defense buff as well. Um, and then sometimes I see them using Ganymede as well. So flex units like that, but the core of the team is like the Guild War defense, uh, ignore defense units. So this is a great example of how this is not even the only person using this. Uh, also, sometimes they use, uh, Wind, uh, what's his face? Wind Inugami as well. Speed lead, defense-based, uh, DPS with a defense break and a strip as well. So, I mean, there, there's just, it's, it's a team that works nicely in G3. That's why I think that Olivia is such a great unit for PvP for Guild Wars, for, uh, what is it? Guild Wars. RTA, and also like beginners, things like Giant Speed 10 would be nice for Giant Speed 10 as well. All right, now we're here on the China server, and here I'm going to pick the Water Lich mostly because I want to skill up. Uh, I want to, I, I have a Fire Lich somewhere, right? I have a Fire Lich somewhere, and I want it not, that's Mav, clearly. I have the other Liches built on here, but I know I have, yeah, there's a Fire Lich. I think he might be nice to, uh, to use for RTA, and I really would like to do some RTA on this server. Because we don't see too much of it. We see, like, sometimes I'm like, during streams, I'm like, I would like to do RTA with this account. And then I'm like, oh, wait, there's nothing built on here. But we'll do, um, we'll do this because Fire Lich is very relevant in RTA. I've seen Water as well, but skills for the Fire Lich at the, uh, are, are super, super good. So, of course, we have super free-to-play friendly, uh... Free to play friendly team. I thought we were doing Giants V10. I thought I clicked the wrong button for a second. We we're doing Giants V10. Uh, this could potentially be annoying based on RNG. I mean, eventually you. Ooh. And with the water. Ooh. This would. This is already going to be annoying. I can already see this being an, uh, an annoying one. Right. Uh, in the higher, the higher level stages, I can already see this being annoying. Well, on the bright side. Vertigo. If if you can't get the CC on Vertigo, this could be annoying too. Is this gonna be the most annoying one? Because the Water Lich can't be CC'd. Is this gonna be the most annoying dungeon? Now, this is not anything too crazy. But I feel like this might be the most. Uh... <laughs> it wins the prize for the most annoying dungeon. How are we gonna beat this now? Hold on, how are we gonna beat this? Okay. I did not think about the fact that there was gonna be light liches in here. GG. This is officially gonna be the most annoying dungeon. Oh, and, well, on the, the, the good thing it's uh, the first stage. Heal block helps. Uh, zinc. Build a zinc. Do you have zinc in storage? It's gonna be a zinc. Oh, I forgot what the. This this light one does. Yeah, this might be the. Let's let's take a look at what the light one does. But I feel like this lich is gonna be the most annoying. Like this is gonna be nightmare <laughs> dungeon, isn't it? <laughs> between the light liches, between the fire liches, and between the uh, the water lich, I feel like this is gonna be the one that like I um um uh, you you uh, alt account plus li lich 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 um. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing B10 of this. I'm not doing B10. Do I have a Zinc on here? Do I have a Zinc on here? You know what? Anyone that has like the, um... 
I want to take a look at her though. I want to take I want to take just a recap of what she does because I totally forgot. Um, but anyone that has the uh, Dark Beast Monk is now very excited. They're like, "Oh, I did the I'm doing the Lich." Uh, of course, 10% of allies granted with harmful effects, 10% every turn, shield equivalent to 10%. Ooh, that could be, that could be annoying, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that could be, this is, I feel like this is gonna be the, um, the more annoying is the Lich one. So this Water Lich was something that I built a while ago, I had the skills for him, uh, and with his new, uh, his new passive buff, it's actually really nice. He stacks his attack and defense the more he gets, uh, the more he gets glanced on, right? Uh, let's take a look at it in a second, though. Let's take a look at it in a second. But he's gonna start doing some big damage. Um, finally have a, an R5 team I feel... It's not super OP of an R5 team, but it, uh, an R5 team I feel comfortable with. Um, you know, to just raid with to raid with uh, randoms, right? Uh, increase your attack power and defense by 10% whenever you receive an attack that doesn't land as a critical hit. And as long as we get the glancing on the, uh, on the boss, then it's gonna be good. Uh, so let's see. Too bad we can't see. Glancing, 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 glancing. Yay, it's gonna be nice. Um, too bad, though. We don't, uh, we can't see how many times it's stacked. That'd be nice if we could see in the game somehow how many times it's stacked. Or like the, oh no, no, we, we, we can. Right there, right there. So we had an attack, uh, an attack break, though. But, and I think that we have an Oblivion, too. I mean, unfortunately, we do, there is the Oblivion here, but. Um, so like 15k with the first skill, but he's on like, he's not, he's on rage, uh, but like kind of a hybrid build. He's on like attack, crit. oh, he got crit on. He's on, uh, he's on a hybrid build though. So he's not like all for damage. But let's see, like, look, he's doing, he's doing a decent amount of damage compared to the other ones. I mean, my overall damage is not the highest, as high as everyone else, but... It was 33, uh, 33k. And he's surviving, though. He's surviving. Which is nice. And I know for a lot of other people that are watching this, they're like, Oh, I could get much better runes than you did on yours, Bagel. I mean, it's, of course, Europe server alt account. Um, and I just ruined him up and started using him, uh... Hey, there we go. Um... What, like, two days ago? So that's pretty cool. Uh, so anyway, let's take a look at the runes on him. I mean, his attack is not that crazy. His attack is 1,500. Um, crit damage is good, though. For... I mean, could be higher as well. But, like, these are not, like... This is, like, a, uh, blue rune, isn't it? Is this a blue... Is this blue or purple? I mean, this one is, uh... We got HP on here. It's got... It's, it's not as, as crazy as it could be, really. If you see the stats, like, it's not... It's not super amazing, ridiculous. And it's working pretty well, though. It's working pretty well. And last but not least, uh, this is the Light and Dark server, Japanese uh, Light and Dark server, Light and Dark account, Japanese server. Uh, so this one, we're only using Light and Dark units, so of course, we're only going to pick a Light or Dark uh, Hall of Heroes. So we're going to do the Conrad. Uh, we can take a look at the Conrad's, um, Conrad's skills really fast, though. It's, he's got a heal block first skill. He's got a second skill, AoE attack uh, break. And then he's got the third skill, does big damage, and potentially fit the speed leader. 19% speed lead. Um, heal block. Uh, we can attack power. Portion to his HP. But he's generally built for attack power, though, not HP. Um, but uh, attacks enemy reviving one monster with 30% HP. If enemy is eliminated by the attack, there are no revival allies on the field. Uh, all allies will receive a damage boost. I'm so good at talking. It's a shield. He revives a new shield. We talked about this earlier. But uh, element neutral, speed uh, leader, is and big burst damage is kind of nice. I'm surprised people don't um, don't really give him enough credit. To be honest, I feel like he's much more exciting than uh, than Talasha. Because a lot of people, oh thunderstorm. Because uh, a lot of people like to go aggressively. They like the speed lead, DPS and nuke that way. They don't like taking turn two. So, uh, let's pop this. Uh, I'm very excited about using this guy, actually, on here. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. So, what kind of stuff can we expect? I feel that the water... Which, whichever part of this is the water uh, water dudes is going to be the, the tricky one. 
This shouldn't be very hard. You can just CC that. I mean, basically for Holly here is you just CC attack age reduction, stuns, CC, uh, bombs, dots, or twins, right? Or twins. Oh, I forgot Nephthys is super OP. Actually, this one... Yeah, this part is going to be tricky. Because these, uh, these Anubises and these uh, Death Knights. This is going to be the trickier one. So... Who has a Rocky? They're very excited. Actually, Rocky. Who has who has a water Anubis? Actually, no, still. I wouldn't even use the water Anubis there. He's, he's, he doesn't have enough CC. Ooh, these Garrows might be kind of tricky too. These Garrows might be kind of tricky. In in the in the higher level stages, I mean. I still feel like that uh, that Lich one is going to be the uh, the most annoying. Oh, I forgot that that uh, Magic Knight does her multi hits. Makes it easy. This is just an easy part of the stage. This is no problems at all. Because you just see, 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 see. And then here it's just yeah, it's not too hard. It just has the one, the one that I feel like are gonna people. It's the the Fedora and. Uh, what is it? The Fedora and uh, Wind Anubis? I forgot his name. Uh, that's gonna be the, the the part that gets people, I feel. Because everything else you can mostly CC. So, excited to get him. I'm excited, but we don't have him yet. I'm excited to get him. But anyway, guys, um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully maybe you got some information out of this. I feel like, like, I know we glanced over it before uh, in another video, but I feel maybe this is like a better, more in-depth thing of like, choosing the different ones or like looking at the different hall of heroes explaining why you'd want to pick each of the units maybe you got some this. i don't know hopefully you did if not then um go eat a snickers you've deserved it for sitting through a bagel video anyway guys uh that's for this one i'll see you as always in the next one